Hello and welcome to Limassol Cyprus and here we are on IFX Expo Week at the Limassol Yacht Club and I'm joined by Natalia Hunik. Hi. Hi Andrew. Uh, nice to see you and thanks for joining us here. Thank um, you. Natalia is Global Head of Sales at Advanced Markets and Fortex in North America. The company also has presence in China so you're very well, well, well versed in terms of setting up business units in specific strategic regions actually as independent units rather than just reaching those companies. So that's something which I can see happening in Cyprus in order for sustainability to, to, to be uh, present within some of the Cyprus brokerages. In the, today, at the first day of the IFX Expo, Cyprus most certainly has grown up in terms of its maturity of its brokerages. There's a lot more expertise and a lot more uh, wish to be more sustainable than there was at the, at the beginning of the retail sector here. It's over 155 brokerages, retail brokerages here in Cyprus, as well as um, companies that support those brokerages, like, such as uh, integration and bridge companies, Prime XM and uh, One Zero, both here in Cyprus. There are some liquidity providers. There are consultancies and regulatory firms and reg tech firms. So it is, it is becoming a multifaceted uh, system. So the thing is, what, what kind of expansion will happen here in Cyprus? And you probably know more than this than anybody because you are providing tier one liquidity to these brokers and they will tell you their aspirations. Right, yes. Um, absolutely. So uh, we're just kind of reflecting upon this couple of days here in Cyprus, uh, you know, all of those things that you've said, um, uh, absolutely, and uh, just kind of other patterns that emerged from talking to people is uh, there's a lot of talk about regulatory costs um, as the market matures becomes more sophisticated uh, and uh, uh, you know also certain issues arise from the client side um, regular uh, regulatory um, body makes changes um, and uh, the compliance costs go up um, and as those, cha those changes are kicking in the brokerages have to make certain adjustments into the, the operations there's a lot of uh, um, talk Talking about that, um, as well as um, you know, talking about how to mitigate the risk. There, uh, there's uh, that's certainly on the broker's mind. Um, uh, a lot of brokerages are looking to STP some of the challenge and flow as they go into the uh, different regions uh, mm -hmm. where the flow is different and they've never seen uh, anything like that before, and that's the, not the risk that they're willing to tolerate um, at the moment. And as you've mentioned, as the market matures. Uh, and um, uh, new, uh, and it's it's it matures, but at the same time, you know, the entry barrier is still low. It is, um, yes. The com new companies are coming to the island, um, and um, there's quite a new few new brokerages that are coming quite in to take few, advantage yes. of the you know the the, the environment, the effects environment in Cyprus, and the talent that the Cyprus uh, you know people talent that the Cyprus has in this yes. industry. Um, and those, those those brokerages are, are, are coming in. Um, there's a lot of demand for FX services, and it's all the vendors are following because the market is. Uh, I don't think you can find anywhere else, you know, a small island, uh, you know, in the world where there's uh, such a high concentration yeah, yeah. of FX companies per square foot. It's completely and FX island. It completely absolutely, is. I think it's uh, it is the FX island. It you is. see FX signs everywhere. Everywhere. Walk down the street, there's FX broker everywhere. That's right. Um, so it's. It's, it's pretty interesting and it's fascinating and you know in Boston I certainly don't see anything anything I like that at all even in London which is yeah. the number one world global yeah. fintech and financial services sector in the world you wouldn't notice it to that level because uh, the, con yeah. the per, because per capita the concentration is really high right. however up until recently they were very they were m m very sm relatively small many not all yeah. small brokerages with a white label license concentrating on specific regions Maybe they might be the regions where those particular brokerages you know, you know, have their origins, mm -hmm. but they're coming to Cyprus to have the credibility of MIFID supervision yes. Yes. and inclusion in a well-known, well-recognized, um, uh, westernized environment of regulatory bodies around the world right. to sell their systems into other countries of, where, of origin, such as the GCC area, the Arabic states, yes. Gulf, and Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Indonesia. Mm -hmm. The thing is now, it's time to really make a bigger entity out of all of these companies. How well positioned are they? When you go into their offices, how well positioned are they to actually get their expertise, to go to China, install a Chinese office, make Chinese servers, have everything done in Chinese, and, and recruit under their own banner a Chinese entity that operates for them? 
or to expand into the um, CIS countries where many brokerages came here to sell to the former Soviet Union state and have uh, maybe sa satellite offices in places like Serbia or Montenegro where they came from and they have businesses here. How lucrative is that and are they able to do it? Um, absolutely. I think it's uh, uh, yes to both. They are able to do that. Uh, and we've seen many of them, uh, many Cypriot firms uh, everywhere, really, in in Asia and Southeast Asia, um, being successful and, and driving a lot of uh, um, a trade and volume out of those regions. And uh, many of them do it properly. Uh, you have to localize, as you said, not just yes. localize with the office, but localize the entire you know, everything structure. around yes. the, you know, the trade ecosystem, you know, the, yes, the trade the and infrastructure network, all of that. And... Um, um, a, a lot of them have been operating in that region for, for a long time, so there are certainly an, uh, experts. But um, I see you know, other firms uh, here um, in Cyprus uh, also trying to penetrate other markets, not necessarily going to Asia because it becomes oversaturated. Yeah. Everyone is trying to go after those customers. And, of course, the local uh, brokers there are also trying to go after their you know their market so well, that's right you have um, monex indonesia yeah. which has got 35 percent of the whole local market and it's a local company yeah. all right so there's a the competition is is fierce in, in those regions and yes, so it is. um i see uh, from my conversations um, just this week i see that uh, quite a few brokerages are going after the underserved regions you know there are still yes, underserved countries are. in europe there and in central are. europe and southern that's europe right. uh, in eastern europe and and uh, Every um, brokerage that enters the market tries to find that niche uh, market where they can be successful in. Well, that's the thing. And with, with the, uh, the regulatory structure here in Cyprus is relevant to those particular countries. And actually, they are underrepresented. There is absolutely no FX industry at all in Southern Europe. Right. Spain, Greece, Portugal doesn't have. It does not exist. Whereas here in Cyprus, it's not far away and they've got... But the question is, is it worth a small Cyprus brokerage establishing presence there or were they just do an organic sales team here in Cyprus compared to going to going to somewhere like um, one of the second tier development towns in China like Guangzhou or Zhengzhou or, or Shenzhen to have an office there with 10 or 15 staff put up the capital for it set it all up get all the infrastructure in place and then get all of the IBs into seminars and sell to the IBs on a B2B basis well, that's a very uh, Chinese model. It is, yeah, it is a very <laughs> uh, but Chinese model. I think it's model. A, you know it it really depends on the country per country basis, and um, I've seen it both ways because it really depends on the culture and you know the, the way that people do business in the, in the particular country. I've seen it both ways. I've seen sales from here where you know um, a certain language spoken, you know person is being either imported to the to Cyprus or you know found locally uh, sourced locally and uh, doing you know direct sales to the region uh, or a small uh, you know representative office in a particular country I think both ways depending on where you you know with what type of clients you're dealing with uh, are certainly possible yes that's very very encouraging to hear that because it's a definite evolution to go to bit to, to make a big step like that into developing infrastructure in other countries is a distinct evolution from the early days of par almost parochialism of having four or five people in office here, an outside investor abroad, and just targeting customers on the phone with a, with a few salespeople. To actually make the step to expand... Actually, the, the first company to do this was FX Pro, who went to London and, had a, 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 and now have a London-based... FCA regulated entity, uh, but that's been relatively rare up until now. So the talk of expansion by actual smaller Cypriot companies into other regions, infrastructurally as well as actually sales and and reach wise, is very interesting. Yeah, there are a few companies, mm. uh, Cypriot companies, originally that went and got the FCA license. Yes, over the last year, a number of them. Yeah, there are, which is very interesting as well. And actually, you, when you go into those companies. What is their aspiration like in terms of their ability to think about generating economies of scale in other regions? Yeah, absolutely. I, there, there, there's a lot of talk about that, and you know, they're trying to uh, introduce some efficiencies into the process. You know, certain things. You know, because the, obviously the cost structures are different between the UK and, and Cyprus, so yes. they're trying to take advantage of, of having the Cyprus office, uh, you know, where the costs are probably lower than running the operation in the UK, right. uh, and, you know, the, the prestige and expertise in certain areas of the, you know, UK employees. Yes. Very interesting. I think in terms of uh, sustainability going forward, Cyprus's place 
you see more as being an operational hub mm-hmm. of sending its expertise to other, other regions to actually set those up, rather like Britain, Britain's retail forex sector was seven or eight years ago. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. Very good. That is encouraging to hear that. Excellent. Thank you for joining us, Natalia. Thank you, Andrew. Nice to see you. Natalia Hunick, Global Head of Sales at Advanced Markets and Fortex. Thank you for joining us here at the Limassol Yacht Club in Cyprus on IFX Expo Week. See you next time. Goodbye. Bye.